Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back, and so I decided I'm gonna move all my. I haven't been doing DFS for a while, videos. So uh, I'm decided I wanted to do them. I got three weeks here uh, with no school, limited work, all of that stuff. So I wanted to go hard, see what I can do, um, make some videos for this channel uh, with the DFS content. So you can exclude the other channel. I probably won't be doing anything on it. I've been doing stuff on this one, uh, breaking down NFL, NBA. What do we got? We'll have one. We'll have UFC 219 uh, before the end of the year. So I'll go ahead and break that down too because I play that. Um, I think that's probably it. I don't know if we have any other contests or anything, but let's get into this. I'm just gonna be breaking down tonight's slate. Uh, it's a 10 gamer, and so we're gonna go game by game. We have a lot of the news already. Um, I'll get into some of the stuff we're still waiting on, but let's start out here with Boston. So. Kyrie Irving is only 8,500 tonight. Um, I have GPP interest in him. I'll break it down cash and GPP interest. So I have G I have GPP interest in Kyrie uh, anytime he's under 9K. They get a pace up here against the Pacers. And so interest in Kyrie. Uh, at, at shooting guard, um, none of these guys really appeal to me. Uh, you could look a little at Jalen Brown once again in the pace up matchup, but nothing special for me there. Moving on to small forwards, um, I guess we can do it. We'll do it this way. We'll go guards and we'll go forwards. So guards, like I said, pretty much just Kyrie in the pace up. Maybe Jalen Brown if you want, but mostly just Kyrie. The forwards, you can take a look at Al Horford. Uh, the Pacers have been bad against uh, big men, especially centers. Miles Turner is questionable for tonight. I'll get into that when we get over to the Pacers. But uh, Al Horford, another tournament option, needs about 42 to hit tournament value. Uh, maybe a little bit higher to hit tournament value. Um, I, I people people like to say five x cash, seven x tournament value. I prefer six x cash, eight x tournament value. I mean, six x for cash. If you hit three hundred in cash, you're gonna cash ninety percent of ninety ninety five percent of nights. In GPPs, eight x that puts you at four hundred. I mean, you're not going to score for, but I mean, the goal is to get guys that can get, that get me 8x. They don't all have to get me 8x, but I want a lot of them to get me 8x. And that puts you at 400. Rarely are you not going to cash it. I mean, rarely, you're going to be close to winning GPPs at 400, which is the goal in playing GPPs. Uh, so it really comes down to the Celtics. This is quick and easy. Kyrie, Horford, pace ups, uh, have a little interest in the centers, maybe take a look at a Baines or a or uh, th uh, Thies if you're if you're in the market for a cheapie and you want to go kind of off the board. That's your options there. Moving on to the Pacers, we'll start off with the Miles Turner. He is currently questionable. Um, it looks like he's trending towards playing, but it's still not sure. If he's out, Sabonis obviously gets the biggest uh, upgrade. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll still be on the game log. No, that was too long ago. Uh, but when... When uh, Turner was out earlier in the year, Sabonis just absolutely ate. So he will be the guy to look for, look at if Turner's out. I'm not sure I like Sabonis in cash over some of the options I'll get in later, but it's 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 viable in cash. But he's definitely a tournament option. Uh, at the guard, it's pretty much Victor Oladipo. You could go Lance in a GPP. He's been. He has some pretty good games, but he's also fluky. You know, like the 28, that'd be good tournament, 27 and a half. Uh, but most of these other games, you know, you got the 38 and a half. But it's kind of a, it's kind of a give or take with Lance. Uh, an, an interesting GPP play at only 4,300. Uh, Oladipo, I don't know, he just feels overpriced. He's been killing it, um, but he's just not a guy I play. But I can see the appeal for uh, GPPs. Uh, at the forward spot, Nothing really there for me. Thad Young, always like an option in cash games, but I don't know. I, I don't play, I'm not playing Thad Young in cash games today, even if Turner is out. So moving on from that game, we go to the Knicks, and we have Kristaps Porzingis, who is questionable. He's actually a game time decision. Uh, luckily, they play at seven, so hopefully we get the news. Tim Hardaway Jr. is still out. Um... But Christoph Porzingis, obviously the biggest one. If he does sit, Michael Beasley becomes a lock for me, especially in cash. Um, maybe not in GPPs, but for cash for sure. Put up that 46 points. Um, 
on Saturday again, or on on Saturday. I think it was on Saturday. On yeah, on Saturday, it was on Saturday against the Thunder because the Thunder played the Sixers on Friday in that triple overtime. But Beasley put up 30 actual points in that game. Uh, I don't doubt. I doubt he'll get to 30 again. But you know, something like a 30 point outing from Beasley still crushes value. Hits well over six x, uh, and so he will be a lock and load for me. Granted, Porzingis is out because his usage is just crazy without Porzingis. Uh, Ennis Cantor becomes a little bit interesting without Porzingis, uh, but I don't like his matchup going up against Dwight. Uh, moving to the guards, Frank Nitalikina. He's been all right. Um, his price has kind of crept up to, I don't know, territories that I don't want to play him at. I, I played him in these two spots um, after I saw his minutes were kind of stabilized. Let me slow down. Yeah. If you can see, his minutes got kind of stabilized. He played that 27, then 21, 21. Uh, but this outing here, he only took two shots, only played 13 minutes against the Thunder, so that kind of worries me. I'll probably stay off of him until minutes stabilize again. Not playing Jarrett Jack or Court Courtney Lee is just too expensive, uh, and not playing, not messing around with Kylo Quinn tonight. There's just too much value. Uh, moving on to the Charlotte Hornets, we've got Dwight Howard. We'll start with the centers. We got Dwight, 7,800. Not a bad price for Dwight. He's been absolutely crushing it, but I don't know. He, he He's a decent cash look, but once again, there's a lot of value at center tonight, and with Dwight being only center eligible, I don't think he'll crack my cash lineup. Uh, he's a decent option for GPPs. Uh, has some upside into the 50s and 60s, but I would say he's more likely to get mid low low 40s upper 30s opposed to towards the 50 mark guards Kemba Walker comes in at only 7100 he's been shooting awful um he's just not been shooting well if we go through here we've got 27 percent 36 33 he had two good games here 45 and 46 which he uh he didn't take a lot of sh he took a lot of shots here but only put up 23 points uh, but this one he only took 13 shots, so I don't put too much stock into that. Kemba's a more Kemba's a volume shooter, and he just hasn't been shooting with a lot of volume this year. But um, like even this game where he shot 66, percent he only shot he only went eight for 12. He just didn't shoot in some of these games. Um, but if I'm gonna get these 22 and 26 shot attempts, um, I, I'm highly considering Kemba for cash tonight. It depends on how everything works out. Uh, there's some studs I want to fix it, fit in, and with the value, I think I can fit them without having to play a guy. Well, I, I want to play Kemba because it makes sense. He's It's an extreme value. They should be a close game. Jared Jack, I'm not scared of Jared Jack defense, so we'll see with Kemba Walker. Um, I would like to play him, but I do have some other guys I like. Uh, there's no other guys here that I really like. Um, I know Travion Graham got ruled out. He's not questionable. He is officially out. Um, but he's not playing an extreme amount of minutes, so it's not too big of a deal, but he is out. Uh, and then forwards, nothing much here. Michael K. Gilchrist did come down in price a little bit. Do have some tournament interest in him, but that's about it. Moving on to Miami, we have some extreme value here. We'll start off with the guards. We'll get that out of the way. Goran Dragic, I think, is hurt. Um, I, I follow the Heat a lot. They're one of my... Uh, in the NBA, I don't really have like a favorite team. I follow a, a, a chunk of teams. I would call Miami, I guess, my favorite team if you put if you made me choose. But I don't think Goran Dragic is right. Uh, this is a good price for Dragic at only 6,100. But he has just not been playing minutes. Like 30 minutes has been his top. And so I just can't trust him in cash or GPPs at, 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 at that point. Uh, I do like Dion Waiters. He's going to jack a lot of shots. He's going to play the minutes. Um, it's just a matter of one of these days, shot's going to go down. He's probably going to be in a GPP winning lineup. Uh, it's just a matter of time when. Josh Richardson uh, with James Johnson out last game, which I'll get into that with the forwards a little bit more. He played 36 minutes. I mean, he was playing that anyway, but with James Johnson out, his usage went way up, as you can see, taking 16 shots. Uh, Josh Richardson, a pretty efficient shooter from the floor, takes a lot of... Um, now, obviously, the six from eight from three is not sustainable, but he's usually a four-attempt three-point guy, and he takes high-quality three-point shots. And so um, I, I I do like, you know, those four threes. I expect him to shoot 50% maybe from the threes. Two for five probably is my expectation tonight, uh, two from five from three. But his usage went way up, so he is in high cash game consideration for me. 
Uh, moving on to the forwards, this is the big deal right here. So we got James Johnson out. We've got obviously we've got um, uh, what's his name? We got Justin Winslow. Justice Winslow will probably be out. I don't think he's been officially ruled out, but I think he yeah he's doubtful for tonight. Um, and so he will probably out. We've got Hassan Whiteside out. So that leaves us with Bam Adebayo, Kelly Olynyk, and Jordan Mickey. And surprisingly, my favorite guy here is Jordan Mickey coming in at 3,200. Uh, I think Bam Adebayo is safe for cash, but I'm not sure I'm going to go there. I think there's enough of other guys at the four, especially if Beasley becomes in. Like if Porzingis is out, it will be Adebayo that suffers from that. I'm not playing Kelly O. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I played Olenek when he got this 11 point game, and it like I didn't play him in cash, but I played him in a tournament. And if he didn't get that 11, I was I was crushing that tournament. If he would have posted this 33, it would have been crushing. But at 5K, he needs about 32. He needs to repeat this performance for me to regret not playing him. And he had five steals in that game. Take away the five steals, which is an outlier because he usually gets no steals or one. He's got 23 points and not a big deal. Doesn't kill me. Uh, Bam Adebayo, he's a kind of a safe cash guy, but he, he lacks real upside, and that's my issue with him. Now, Jordan Mickey at 3,200 gives you some upside. He played more minutes than Bam Adebayo, and he produced 27 fantasy points. And this game wasn't a blowout. It's not like he got blowout minutes. It's not like anything like that happened, so... Uh, he's got to be efficient because he's not going to take a lot of shots. But at 3,200, Mickey needs about 20 to make me ecstatic that I played him. Moving on to Atlanta, not much here that I like. Um, we'll start with center. John Collins is back. Uh, Muscala. They're all back. And so I don't really have any interest. I know they finalized the two-way contract with Kavanaugh. Um, and so he should still be there. Babbitt is back. I just have no interest in the bigs. Um, Ilyasova can get hot, but no interest. Bazemore and Prince, um, they've kind of stopped taking their every other game, like, oh, Bazemore will do good this game, Prince will do good this game. So they've kind of taken a break from that. And so, um, they've kind of been kind of stable each, but they're both 5,800, which means they need about 36 to make me regret not playing them after I thought about them. Uh, Bazemore has a pretty low floor, is my issue with Bazemore. And Prince has, um... He has, he has a higher floor, but his ceiling's a little bit lower. So that's kind of the trade-off you get with the pair of them. Probably won't play them. Maybe look at Bazemore, but I don't know. Eh, probably not. Dennis Schroeder comes in at 7,200. I I played Schroeder a lot this year, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get one of these. With Kemba Walker at 7,100 and... Uh, Donovan Mitchell, which I'll get into later at 6,700. I'm not going to play Dennis Schroeder at 72. So that's it for the Hawks. Not much interest there. Moving on to the 76ers, we have um, Ben, or we not we, we don't have Ben Simmons out. We have Joel Embiid out, and we have Trevor Booker out, making Dario Saric the lock and load for me today. He will be in my FanDuel and DraftKings lineups. Lock him in. Amir Johnson will start for Joel Embiid. I, that came through. Uh, so he's an interesting play at 3,500, along with Rashawn Holmes. Holmes has been playing some, when he gets the minutes, he's been crushing. 24, 33, put up 30s apiece. This 18 at his price wouldn't kill you. It's not what you want, but that's not a killer. Uh, and then he's got this 24. Those are low minutes. I would expect high, I would expect the 24 minutes opposed to the 20s, uh, especially with a three big man rotation. But I could see them slotting Covington down, playing a little bit small. So Bob Covington at 6,300 becomes interesting. Ben Simmons, um, he should draw Chris Dunn or Justin Holiday most of the game, I believe. Um, so that makes him pretty interesting. If they slot Simmons... Um, Sometimes they'll slot Simmons at the power forward. Not a lot, but sometimes they'll slot him down there. He'll get Nikola Mirotic or Laurie Markkinen probably because Markkinen was ruled in. I'll talk about that. But really in this game, it's Holmes, Johnson, Saric, Covington, and maybe a little Ben Simmons. Simmons, um, I don't know, 9,600. I just don't see the upside. In, like Obviously, he has the upside. He had 66 against Washington, but... He needs in the 50s. He needs mid 50s to really kill me. So, and he won't be high owned in cash. So I don't know. I, I probably won't touch Simmons today. 
Moving on to the Bulls, we've got Lori Markkinen ruled in. He is in, so you don't get the Nikola Mirotic value or the Bobby Portis value. So this is a complete stay away from me. I will not be playing any, any of the Bulls. Um, Chris Dunn interests me, but, and so does David Nawaba, but I'm not going to go there. I just, I, I have no interest in going there. I'm not going to Robin Lopez. Okay, so let's move on to the Nuggets. Um... So, Emmanuel Moutier is doubtful. If he's out, that will solidify Jamal Murray's minutes. You can see here on Moutier, the minutes have been literally all over the place. Um, they've mostly been in this 15 range, but he did have these, like, outlier games that, like, really kind of screwed things up, and it was, like, always a question mark if he could. Jamal Murray's is a little expensive at 5700 I doubt I pay 5700 for him, especially with Jokic back, but Murray has just been absolutely crushing He's been crushing in his time. Um, obviously, he had those bad games that, that, uh, that they didn't reduce his price off those bad games, which was really surprising to me. But So you didn't even get a discount. He only took six shots in this game against Orlando, which was crazy. But he's been chucking the last few games. I doubt I go to him. Um, it's not a great matchup against... It, it's a decent matchup against Westbrook, but Murray also has to guard Westbrook, so... I don't know how... I have interest in Murray, but he needs 33-ish for me to regret not playing him. I don't want any part of Will Will Barton or Gary Harris. They should draw Andre Roberson defense, and if they move to the... If Barton comes in at the small forward, he'll get Paul George defense, which I don't want to mess with either of those. And at the forward, you can take a look at Trey Lyles. He's been pretty good over the past some few games. Um, but I don't know. I just don't want to play... Tr I don't know. I, I guess I'm just stubborn. I don't want to play Trey, Trey Lyles. He should get mellow, which makes it really intriguing because Kenneth Fareed, Kenneth Fareed makes this so hard because he got a DN, DNPC, what is it, DNPCD, did not participate coach's decision. Um, and so I don't know. If he plays minutes, it hurts Lyles. Chandler's I, I just don't want to mess with this. I really don't want to mess with this whole situation. Chandler's playing 26 minutes, but he's not hitting value, really. I, I don't know. I'm not messing with that situation. Trey Lyles, elite tournament play, I think, but other than that, not going to touch that. Moving on to the Thunder, um, Steven Adams is still out. Dakari Johnson should draw the start again, but he didn't play that many minutes. Only played 14 minutes, put up 10 points. Filled the stat sheet, got one in everything, but not worth the play. I played Pat-Pat in that game. Uh, Pat Pat put up 28, but he's only going to play 25 minutes, so you're going to need him to bang in a couple. He banged in four threes, so you're going to need that. You're going to need him to get these these blocks and steals, I feel, are outliers. I'm not going to act like those were... I, I got lucky with that. He probably should have been around 18 points, but uh, I'm not going to go back to Pat Pat <laughs> um, in cash. I played him in cash, so I'm not going back there. Russell Westbrook. Now, this is of note. Russell Westbrook is 11-2. That's it. He's only 11-2. Uh, which brings, which is why I'm having a tough decision. It kind of comes down with who Russell Westbrook and a punt, and two punts against like Donovan Mitchell, Kemba Walker, and I don't know a mid-tier punt. Uh, that's what it kind of comes down here uh, against Westbrook. And so I, I would like to fit Westbrook in, uh, but I, I'm kind of stuck on Durant. But Durant is more the Westbrook, which just seems wrong. And so it kind of, it's, it's caused some issues, but Westbrook is my preferred play uh, in this game. Um, I don't want any part of Mello or Paul George. I just, I don't, I don't mess with them. I don't. Paul George is so inconsistent. Like, his game log just pisses me off. And then you watch the games and it just pisses you off. Like, he'll have these games. I don't, we can't count the Philly game. That went in triple overtime. But look at these. These suck. And then he has, like, these 62-point explosions where he scores all the points, he takes all of Russ's usage, and I don't know, it just pisses me off. Like, I, I can't, I don't want to sit here and try to figure out Paul George. Utah, Derek Favors officially ruled out. So we've got Derek Favors out. We've got Rudy Gobert out for multiple games. I want to say it's like, a, it was either a week or a month. He's out for a while. Um, we'll get a little bit of value here. But Ekpe Udo, I also played him in cash. He put up 40 against the Cavs. Now, <laughs> he had six blocks and three steals, so let's not expect that again. But I would say 10 points. L let's bump him up. Let's get the 10 points for him and 10 rebounds. He gets the double-double. What is that? 22.5. 
It's like 24 points. That's plenty for Ekpe Udo. Uh, if he gets that, no blocks, no steals. We'll cut all that out. We'll just say we'll eliminate the expectation of steals and blocks, and we'll eliminate the expectation of any assists. If he just gets 10 points, 10 rebounds, that's 24. That's plenty of value for him. I'll take it. And so he will be in my cash games. I'm locking him in. Uh, Iso Joe, uh, this is just something to take note of, maybe for GPPs. He played 30 minutes uh, in the last game without Gobert in favor, so just something to keep an eye on. He's just going to shoot. He'll get a couple assists, a couple of rebounds, but uh, just something to keep an eye at. Eye on at 3,500. Jingle and Joe, uh, I don't know what to do with him. He's 4,900. He hits value. Like You're probably going to get value out of Joe Ingles, but... The issue becomes is he kind of flip-flops back and forth. Like, some games he gets the rebound. Some games he gets the assists. Sometimes he gets the, the 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 steals. Like, down here he got two steals. That helped him hit value. But he's good for some points. He's good for high minutes. Um, we can't really expect it. This is probably the most explosive he's going to get is 32.25. He's a strong cash game consideration. He's kind of a guy I'm looking at to go with Donovan Mitchell and... And Kemba Walker moving let's talk about Donovan Mitchell so Donovan Mitchell got a price reduction off of his I don't know I guess you can call it a quote-unquote bad game he was like I want to say he was like 60% owned in cash against Cleveland uh he struggled I, I, <laughs> it's kind of weird to say he struggled when he went he was 67% shooting and, and a 50% from three but he had seven points at half and just one assist and one rebound and then he had I believe entering the fourth quarter, it was only like 14 points, the one assist, two rebounds, and he didn't have the steal yet. And so he was far away, and then he put in some buckets in the fourth that really helped him make it up. But Donovan Mitchell looking like probably he will make it into my lineup. Uh, Ricky Rubio at 5,100 is interesting, but I don't know. I don't play Ricky Rubio. Um, he's still getting edged out by Donovan Mitchell, so I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to play him. Uh, Alec Burks. Interesting play. Um, if he if he's going to get 10, not really interested. If he's going to get 25, I'm a little more interested. But I think with Rodney Hood back, I think that's what screwed him up. So probably not going to go back to there. Um, and so that kind of does it for that. Tabo played a decent game last game. Um, put up 21. Uh, only played 18 minutes, so that's kind of the issue. But uh, Tabo did have a nice game. Moving on to U or moving on to Houston. Don't have too much interest here. Um, Unless Capella gets ruled out. If Capella gets ruled out, I have some interest in uh, the forwards, uh, Tucker and uh, um, Anderson. Ryan Anderson would be my most interested. Uh, Trevor Ariza a little bit, but his minutes wouldn't see too big of a bump, as you can tell. He's kind of a decent cash game play, looking at 24 or 25 from him, pretty much locked in uh, with a little chance for upside and a little bit of a chance for some downside to that. Uh, guards. Really comes down to Chris Paul, James Harden. I will say Eric Gordon. There's going to be a blow-up game for Eric Gordon, like a huge blow-up game. Bigger than this 33. There'll probably be like a 40-point game for Eric Gordon one of these days. Um, I just, I'm not going to try to predict when that is. But CP3, priced up, 9K. I think this is where I hop off CP3. Um, I don't know. This this will be a pace-up game, but at 9K, I can pay 100 less for Lillard. And so I'll probably just play, I'll probably just go to Lillard. Uh, Harden at 10-5 has seen his usage kind of go down with CP3. Um, still able to post these massive games, but uh, CP3 has dug into his usage. But still two viable options for both cash and tournament. Deselect those. We are six games in. Moving on to the final four. We got Portland, Minnesota. Portland, Damian Lillard. One of my favorite plays on the day. One of my favorite plays overall. Uh, follow me on Twitter. You know I play him a lot. Did play him. I played him against Orlando, so that was not a great night. At 9,400. He started that game out so well, too. He was he had like 7-4-2 with a steal and a block in the first, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a great night. And then it just went downhill from there. Uh, Charlotte was a weird game with his points uh, at 18. When he doesn't score like 24, 25, he's just not going to get there. It's just not going to happen. I mean, he got there kind of, he met five X value here, but that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, the 50 points, I know he'll get back to the score in the 30. Uh, and this is a good matchup against, uh, Minnesota. He gets Jeff Teague defense. Um, 
I think Jimmy Butler and Wiggins have switched. Wiggins is playing the small forward. Butler is playing the shooting guard, which means C.J. McCollum will be locked up with Jimmy Butler, which should help Damian Lillard get a little bit loose. Other than that, I have no interest in anybody. Maybe Al Farouk Aminu. He'll have to play some minutes. But other than that, no interest. Nurkic is still on a minutes limit around 25, I believe, so no interest there. Forwards for the Timberwolves. No interest here. Don't even want to talk about it. Not paying 6-1 for Taj Gibson. It's not happening. Cat, 8800 A nice little price reduction for Cat. Uh, coming off of, I don't get why he got this price reduction down to 8800 It makes no sense to me, but he got this price reduction. If there wasn't this value on the slate, he would probably be a lock and load for me in cash, but there is all this value on the slate, and as you can see, that's five straight games of 53-plus points, and he got a price reduction now. He got an $800 price reduction. Like, I don't get it. Uh, I just really don't understand the price reduction on Cat on DraftKings. Uh... If you can't tell, most of my opinions apply to DraftKings and FanDuel, but DraftKings is my preferred site, and it's I think it's just easier for me to go over DraftKings slate like this than FanDuel. Uh, so let's move on, because you got to go like position by position on FanDuel, and I just don't want to do that. So moving on, it's pretty much just Cat. Uh, Jimmy Butler is in. He's he went through shooter ground. He's got that sore back, but Tom Thibodeau seems to say that he's going to be in, uh, and that means if Jimmy Butler's in, Jimmy Butler's playing 36 minutes minimum. I played him in this game against Phoenix, dude. I cashed that night with a t with just absolute garbage on my team that night. Somehow I cashed. Don't ask me how, but I cashed that night. But Jimmy Buckets should be in, should be good to go. Um, interesting play at 8,400. Needs about 50 to meet my personal value so we'll see but no one else on minnesota interests me moving on to phoenix and dallas uh interesting little tidbit here mike james was a dmp cd i believe in the last game uh yeah against the timberwolves he was um he just didn't play isaiah cannon 27 minutes huge gpp flyer i don't know if people are on isaiah cannon but that's a huge gpp flyer for me i might throw a gpp in just to play isaiah cannon because i don't think he'll be owned i'll have to check the ownership on roto grinders uh, and see what he's supposed to be owned but that's an interesting play other than that i don't have much interest on the suns uh it is tyson chandler night um he should he's the starter i believe confirmed so he should be playing that means greg monroe will not play and then in the next game greg monroe should play but other than that not much on phoenix that interests me on dallas uh uh dennis smith jr got ruled out he is officially out today which brings yogi farrell and west matthews back into play uh probably fan duel locks i think west matthews is 47 over there which is a pretty good deal for him uh, but Yogi Ferrell put on an absolute show against the Spurs. 17-11, uh, 6 and a steal. Don't expect that from him. But this is not a crazy outcome for him. 32 points. And that would crush value. That'd be, what is that? That'd be like 6.4x 6. 6. On, his, on his salary. So that would be huge. I know he hasn't been doing that regularly but this is a pace up game against the suns he gets tyler Eulis defense and isaiah cannon defense it's not like it's any crazy defense that he's going to be facing there so i would i project him around 32 points that's what i that's what i'm that's what i would project him around is 32 he can get there with assists he can get there with rebounds uh he's not going to get there with blocks and steals uh hopefully he gets you a steal uh that helps you towards your point total obviously and so hopefully he gets that for you but yogi farrell Wes Matthews, those are about my only two interests here. Maybe a little Dirk in GPPs. Maxi Kleber, maybe a little him in GPPs. But other than that, not looking too much into Dallas. Moving on to the Clippers and the Spurs. So Clippers, we got Glit Griffin out. Wes Johnson is out. Um, Lou, William, Lou Williams got ruled. Whoa. When did Lou Williams get ruled out? Okay, well, Lou Williams is out. I totally missed that. Lou Williams is out. That is a ton of usage to go around. Austin Rivers is in. Um, that got he didn't get officially, officially quote unquote ruled in, but he's in. Uh, Milos Teodosic is in. Um, that creates some interesting things. DeAndre Jordan at seventy one hundred becomes very interesting against Old Man Powell. Uh, Jordan has just been crushing this this price tag. Like look at this. Not once did he not hit the five x value since utah on the 30th and that would have been just below value 
you'd have to go all the way back to the Lakers for when he didn't hit value. So DeAndre Jordan won't get a price. He's just not getting his price in to increase. He's good for he's good for that 11 and 14 that he's averaging. I mean, it takes it like since Griffin went down, he's been pretty darn good for that. So um, I'm gonna assume he's good for. He's good for 40. He's interesting, but the value is just screwing me at center. I want to. I might make a GPP just so I can play uh, DeAndre Jordan, Cat. Um, yeah, I can only play two centers, so those will be <laughs> those will be it. So Jordan and Cat, uh, because they're such extreme values at their price, and so I, I can I want to squeeze them in, but I don't know if I can put them in my cash game. Um, this kind of has thrown me off, the fact that Lou Williams is out. I did not know that. Um, I, I try to keep up with most NBA news all day, and I just didn't catch the Lou Williams out. So, huge boost to Austin Rivers. I think that's the biggest boost. If Austin Rivers is going to play 36 minutes with Lou Williams off the court, I'm thinking 22 shots for Rivers. Who else is taking shots? I mean, Teodosic sh shoots, kind of, but I don't think he's going to shoot 20 times. Jawan Evans? I might go back to the Jawan Evans well. I played him when he dropped the 41. He should play minutes without Lou. Because Lou, Lou was playing 30s. 36, 32. That's a lot of minutes someone's got to pick up. It's probably going to be Jawan Evans. Huh. That makes it very interesting. I did not know Lou Williams was out. But yeah, probably Austin Rivers. That's probably that's probably who I'm going to is Austin Rivers. Don't know if I'm playing in cash. Uh, for the Spurs, Kyle Anderson is out. That's about all the news there. I'm not playing anybody here. Kawhi's still on his minute limit. Aldridge, whatever. I'm not playing Aldridge. Um, he can get there obviously, but I'm not playing. I'm not playing anyone in the Spurs. Okay, let's move on. Kobe retirement number night. Golden State Warriors Lakers. Late night hammer, 10.30. We've got four people out for the Warriors. Draymond Green is out. Steph Curry out still. Livingston out and... Uh, I thought someone else was out. Curry, Livingston, Green... Oh, Pachulia. Yeah, yeah, Zaza is out. Yeah, Zaza, Green, and Livingston, Curry. So that takes our attentions to Jordan Bell and David West. Now, Jordan Bell is 4,500. And he has not been, like, smashing that. This 30 would be nice. Um, but he had eight assists in that game. And as you can tell, he clearly does not get eight to six. Eight, he doesn't even get four assists on a regular basis. Uh, and so, I don't know. I probably will not be playing Jordan Bell tonight. Um, that's just, like, a little bit too much. If he was 4K, probably. Uh, David West, you know, obviously doesn't play the minutes. But he's super efficient this year. And so for 3,600, it becomes interesting. He's looking like he's going to put up these 20-point games when he plays these minutes. And so with the usage of no Draymond, no Curry, it, 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 he becomes a viable option. But I think there are just guys that are safer with more minutes to play. Omri Caspi becomes interesting to me. Uh, he's going to play 30 minutes again with no Draymond, I would assume. 25 probably is the median, uh, so we'll expect, expect that. He's going to get rebounds. The two games he's played recently without Draymond, 9 and 11 rebounds. And so, probably go back to the Caspi well. I would expect more along the lines of 10 and... T I don't even know if I can say 10 and 10. Maybe 12 points, 8 rebounds? We'll go with that. 12 points, 8 rebounds. I'll, I'll go with that expectation. 12 points, 8 rebounds for Omri Caspi. Um... We'll talk about Andre Iguodala. He's 4,200. He's safe for his 20-ish, I think. This is kind of an outlier where he only posted 11, but he's good for his 20-ish with these guys out. He's going to play 30-ish minutes. Um, he's a safe play. Not in love with him. We'll talk quickly about Clay Thompson. Uh, Clay, 7,000. Always interesting. His dad uh, does the uh, radio for the Lakers. It's always interesting for Clay. He's relatively safe. Doesn't possess a lot of upside. Highly scoring dependent for Clay, so I don't know. I don't always. I don't have a lot of interest in Clay ever, unless he's in the low 6K range, which he never is. And then finally for the Warriors, Kevin Durant, my lock and load in cash games. I think um, with those guys out, he's just so safe. He's going to put up 30 points. Um, and with those guys out, these last four games, I mean, it's been insane. 
73, 73, 52, 65. Uh, if KD puts up 50 tonight, I mean, obviously, it's not the value I want. But in cash, it will not kill me. And so I will probably be locking, I will probably be locking KD in. Moving on to the final team, it is the Los Angeles Lakers. We got Brandon Ingram as the top option for me. Gets Kevin Durant. Uh, it's going to be guarding Kevin Durant, most likely. Um, which makes him interesting for some steals and some blocks. KD um, can turn the ball over a little bit, and KD can sometimes get blocked on... Or not blocks, I guess, but steals more than anything. Um, but Brandon Ingram possesses some upside there with um, steals. And so I I'm thinking more towards the game, more around the 30 point mark. You know, he's kind of safe for his 25 ish, which isn't really value at his price. But uh, with a floor like that, that's kind of nice um, with high upsides in the, the 40s and 50s. Um, I don't have a whole lot of interest on the Lakers. I don't know who I guess Lonzo Ball maybe on. I have no interest in anybody except Lonzo. I guess I'll, I'll go with that right now. Um. I guess I'm, I was trying to think of someone who's going to get behind the Kobe narrative. Oh, Kobe's retiring, um, or not Kobe's Kobe's retire Kobe's re jersey retirement. There we go. His number retirement. Who's going to get behind that and be like, oh, let me show up tonight? Kind of a narrative street. I guess it's probably Lonzo Ball. Uh, I don't play Lonzo. Um, he has been solid these last two games, but every time I played Lon I played Lonzo like twice early in the season. I was getting like. I was getting like this game right here, the twenty, the three point game where he shoots one for seven. Like that's the type of crap I was getting when I played Lonzo. So I just haven't played Lonzo. I should probably go back. He's been crushing uh, a lot more than he's done. Did I think I played him here against Houston in a GPP and he got me ten and I was like, well, that's it. I'm done with Lonzo. Never playing him again. Uh, but I should probably go back to the well. Uh, one more thing in case I forget. When KCP is on his weird can't leave the state of California. Play Josh Hart. Uh, KCP will be playing tonight, so don't play him tonight. But Josh Hart is going to get his minutes when he's out. Um, Josh Hart, um, Vill I'm a huge Villanova college basketball fan, and so I know all about Josh Hart. Um, probably would have been a higher draft pick had he come out last year uh, when they won the national championship, opposed to this year where they got kind of where they got knocked out of the tournament. Uh, and so he's a lot better player than where he got drafted. And I think he should be getting minutes over. I, I assume in the future, their plan is to get him more minutes over a guy like Clarkson. I don't know why Corey Brewer still, why does Corey Brewer still get eight minutes a game? Why is he getting those eight minutes? Just give him to Josh Hart. Um, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it. That's the breakdown. That's the slate tonight. We'll catch you guys back, um, tomorrow. I'll have time tomorrow to make a video, so we'll, we'll catch you back tomorrow for another DFS breakdown. Um, it may go up a little bit earlier. I have a weird class tomorrow that starts at like 1, so I don't get home till 3, so that would kind of that would kind of press us up against the wall to get this out in time for you guys to watch it and get ready for tonight's slate. Obviously, news breaks. If you got any questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'm always willing to chat DFS and whatnot. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.